Hey guys, it's Julie Spencer, author juliespencer.com. Um, we are going to be continuing our discussion today about sex, my favorite topic. I know I'm scandalous. Um, I'm, I'm taking a lot of what we're talking about from the book that I wrote called Writing Romance is Not About Sex or Is It? And the subtitle is How Far is Too Far in Clean Romance? And although this book is about clean romance, I'm trying to focus the videos on genre romance. So um, if you write spicy romance, you know, you're still going to be able to gain something from these videos. Um, this particular video is is actually focused just on clean and wholesome romance and, and some into the sweet romance. Um, so if you write spicy romance, this might not be the video for you. Sex is a beautiful gift from God. Um, I, I, I love sex. I don't think that it's dirty. Um, and when I'm talking about clean is, is the genre. Okay. So I'm not saying that, that sex is dirty or clean. Um, I just, um, when I'm talking about this, it's, it's, um, it's just the genre, clean and wholesome romance genre that's, that's clean. Um, so I read and write clean or semi-sweet um, romance. So um, it's on the upper range of what's acceptable in the, in the genre. Um, I'll explain that later. But um, as I mentioned, there's nothing dirty about sex. So um, I'm just referring to the genre that goes no farther than closed door relationships. Um, in clean romance, what happens in the bedroom stays in the bedroom. So what your characters do is, you know, what what characters do in the bedrooms is none of our business as, as the reader. Um, so what you write in your fiction is also none of my business. If you want to describe every detail, that's your choice. I won't judge you. Like I said, I love sex. I've heard a lot of questions in writers forums, um, Facebook groups, um, over and over people who are switching from spicy to clean and they want to know how much is too much, how far is too far, um, where do you draw the line between what you can get away with um, in a clean romance and, and I say that depends um, and we're going to get into that a lot more in, in a different video specifically on how far is too far in clean romance. Um, but today we're just going to kind of discuss what is clean romance. Um, Frankly, if you have to ask how far is too far, chances are that what you're asking about is too far. Um, that's not to say you can't include it in your stories. Just make it clear on the back cover that, that, that that's what's in your book or you're going to receive bad reviews. Um, and a little disclaimer, everything in this video might be obsolete a few years from now because what might be considered clean um, or scandalous today is not necessarily going to be what is clean and scandalous a year from now. Just like 50 years from now is not the same as now. Um, I don't know because I'm only 48, so I wasn't around 50 years ago. Ask me again in a few years. Kidding. Um, my point is that what is considered clean, clean romance 10 years ago might not be what's considered clean romance 10 years from now. Um, so no matter what society says is clean, um, is, is clean or not clean, we have to write our own stories. Um, again, this comes back to our responsibility as authors to make sure that our, um, our cover design, our back cover, um, the blurbs, everything is, is being very clear to the reader about what's inside of our book. So there is a reader for every heat level and a heat level for every reader. Finding the right heat letter that you're comfortable writing and the heat level that your, your readers are comfortable reading. Um, if you want to write clean romance, don't take your characters into the bedroom, like at all. Because if your readers see that they're going into the bedroom, they're going to assume that they're having sex, even if they're not. So to create clean romance, um, you may have to leave sex completely out of the equation. Um, and just have like the boy and girl staring into each other's eyes at the, on the dance floor at prom, knowing that on Monday all things are going to be great because they'll be holding each other's hand. Um, another way to create clean romance is to have like the proposal be the big finale and then the epilogue have the bride and groom on their wedding anniversary saying, you know, we're expecting our first baby. This is so exciting. Every reader knows that they had sex somewhere in between there. 
but it's never even mentioned in the framework of the story. So clean romance can also flip all this on its head and have two teenagers falling in love and learning that sex is the only thing they can't have and the only thing they want. So this involves discussions with parents, teachers, best friends, doctors, each other. Um, sex can be an entire topic of a book, but never actually happen in the book. Um, um, a little bit of warning about casual sex, okay? More than just falling in love and one thing leading to another, casual sex will kick your clean romance right into the stratosphere of spicy, unless it is shown as what not to do. Um, so you can't have your main characters have a blase attitude about sex, then close the door to the reader and try to pass the story off as clean. Um, even if um, even though the sex didn't happen on the page, it was the attitude of the characters about it happening that caused your story to, to exit the clean romance category. So um, as a reference, casual sex can be used as a way to portray someone's character um, in a story, especially when that person is the antagonist, okay? So if you've got a good guy trying to win the girl's heart and another guy equally you know, competing for the girl's heart, um, a little reference about them playing the field is going to show the reader that that guy is not who she should end up, end up with in a clean romance. Um, so it'll be obvious to the reader who she should choose in the end. Um, same thing for a one night stand. Um, one night stand is on the same level as casual sex. And um, this is a complete disregard to the notion of falling in love. So if you're writing spicy romance, a one night stand is a great way to include sex in your story. If you're writing a clean romance, um, a one night stand is a great way to catapult your <laughs> clean romance right out of the clean romance category. Um, so all the same rules apply um, as casual sex, just um, because it's not on the page, um, doesn't mean that it's not considered spicy if your character's attitudes is what's making the difference. So um, let's talk a little bit about girls, okay? Girls just wanna have fun, right? It's okay for your female characters to be as spunky as the boy characters. Don't try to portray the girls as goody two-shoes and the guys as horn dogs. It's just not realistic, okay? Girls want romance too, or you wouldn't be selling as many romance books as you are. Give the girls what they want. Just give it to them in a nice, sweet, clean way if you're writing clean romance, okay? Let me be blunt. Women don't just want romance. We want sex. But we're not talking about um, our, you know, our bedrooms. We're talking about a, a romance book. So um, if, if you're going to keep your, your book in the clean category, um, you know, you, you've got to keep the descriptions off the page and the attitudes of the protagonists in the clean categories also. That being said, um, you don't have to come right out and say that they had sex in order to get the message across to the reader. Just be careful um, not to take things too far. Just because a girl has needs doesn't mean that you need to show those needs on the page if you want to keep your book in the clean romance categories, okay? Um, same thing with guys. Don't use the cliche that guys only want one thing. Um, okay, they want two things, but cooking for them every other page doesn't work either. Um, it's true that a 17-year-old boy has probably has sex on his mind 99% of the time, unless they're an athlete, and then they have food coming as the first and second is sex. So um, just be careful to... Let your characters be realistic, um, but also don't be so cliche, okay? Guys want to fall in love too, um, as long as falling in love eventually leads to sex. <laughs> okay, I know that's being really cliche about guys too. Um, eventually doesn't have to happen within the pages of the book. It could be um, 10 years down the road, okay? It doesn't even have to happen within the framework of your story. Um, and plus, remember that guys' bodies um, are physiologically different than girls' bodies, okay? Anybody that says that um, boys and girls are created equal, it, it, they need an anatomy and physiology lesson. A guy cannot just turn it off on a dime, okay? So it's not realistic to be like hot and heavy making out and then, you know, oh, we're going to just 
stop and go have some, you know, plate of spaghetti or something, you know, you've got to be realistic about it. So give your guys a pair of running shoes and, and superhuman, you know, willpower strength to, to make sure that it's, it's obvious to the reader that, um, you know, even if, if you're keeping it in a clean romance, I'm going to kind of back up a little bit. If you're keeping it in clean romance, you probably don't even want them on the couch making out. Um, there are like extremely mild reference to the fact that he um, is turned on at all. Like, you don't even, don't even use those words if you want to keep it in a, in a clean category, okay? Um, so how far is too far? in a clean romance, okay? That's the next subject that we're going to talk about in, in our next video. Um, where do you cross the line? Um, there's not always a good answer to that. Um, so we will talk about that a little bit more in our next video. And um, once again, if you wanna get in touch with me, the best way to do that is by my email, which is julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. It's julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. And you can find my books at authorjuliespencer.com. Um, and we do offer um, author coaching and publishing coaching. So if you are interested in, in getting more out of your publishing career um, and you want somebody to hold your hand going through that, um, got myself as an author coach, got a couple other people that I um, can recommend if, if you and I aren't a good fit. Um, and then we also have some editors um, that we we um, that we work with, and cover designers, and we've got content editors, proofreaders. So um, we have a lot of services that you can um, talk to us about on SpencerPublishingLLC.com. Um, anyway, I'll see you in the next video. I hope that you guys have a a great evening. It's evening for me where I am in um, Michigan. Um, so wherever it is in the world that you are. Uh, watching this video. I hope you're having a great day. See you later.